I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, as Denise said, my name is Lisa J. Weiss, and I'm the owner of Eye of the Storm Coaching and Consulting. And I'm really excited to be here today to engage in a conversation with you about accessing the leader that lives within. Because for me, uh, that is the foundation of everything in terms of how we live our life. So how we're going, how it's going to work for today, because again, I believe in having a conversation as opposed to speaking, you know, to you. So it, feel free. There'll be times that I'll be asking you questions, you know, for you to, to answer. So you can just loosen up a little bit and, and get ready to be a part of the conversation. I'm going to break down the conversation today into three parts. The first part is how you define leader. In, in your life and in your world. The second part will be being leader or how to be leader. And the third part will be then how to invite others to lead. And we're going to be looking at it from a construct of our structure of reality and how we see things both internally and externally. So let's start with the how do you define leader? So when you consider the word leader, what pops to mind for you as you think about leader? What are some of the things that come up for you in terms of defining leader? Take a moment, take a breath, and then let her rip. Responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lead by example. Right. Anything else? Trustworthy. Okay. What was that? Accountable. Accountable. Guide. Mm -hmm. Inspire. Success in your field. So there were two people there. Go ahead. Successful in their field. Uh, an expert in their field. Yep. And there was one more, I think. Inspire. Inspire. Right. Motivate. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. These are all excellent ways of describing what leader is. And we have been culturally conditioned to lead a certain way. I'm going to bring up a model that I want to share with you. See, can everyone see that? I believe so. Okay. So this model is called the nested living systems. How we come to define leader is often a result of the nested living family systems that we come from. It's where we learn how to define success and power and leadership and effectiveness and a respect. It starts with our family system. What we often don't realize is when we are leading or when we are in leadership positions, we are leading from all the things that we learned from our family system, how we sat around the dinner table, you know, when we were allowed to speak, when we weren't allowed to speak, uh, how we were allowed to speak, right? All of these things were infused from years and years of years of 24 seven, seven days a week, 365 days a year from our family systems. And then we go into organizations with those perspectives or beliefs and attitudes that we have grown up with. And so just to give you a little bit of context as to where our leadership, our notions of leadership come from is our family system. So I'm going to stop sharing that for now. 
So our beliefs, values, and attitudes, right? These are the underlying tenets for how we define leader within us. And when we are in positions of leadership, oftentimes it's more of an externally referenced thing, right? We have lots of courses and lots of um, trainings that we go on to become leaders within an organization. But I want to engage a conversation around how you take that in terms of how you lead your life, because I think it's, it's about having a holistic approach to leader and being leader. How am I leading myself and my life? And then it can be broken down into, if I have a team, how do I lead a team? And it involves some internal work, right? We need to go inside ourselves to discover what it means to be leader. Does that make sense to everyone? All right, so how we define leader. Second, how do we be leader? Now, that's a really interesting question, I think. What does it mean to be a leader? And I think for many people, when we take on leadership roles and positions, whether for our own businesses or within organizations, and we take the courses and the classes, we are being taught a, a specific set of skill sets, right? How to listen, how to speak, how to engage in a conversation, how to, how to manage a group. These are all specific skill sets, which are absolutely necessary, but how do, we, how do we address it in terms of being leader? And for this, it's about who you're presenting to the world. So as you consider leader, you know, we talked about how you define leader. Now, I'm curious to ask you, what does it mean for you to be leader? What does that look like in your every day when you consider being a leader? Or in other words, doing leadership, right? Doing leader. What are some of the things that come up for you in terms of how you be leader? Being present. Being present. Listening. Mm -hmm. Having empathy. Caring about the success of others and the team, not just about yourself. Mm -hmm. Being authentically yourself and yeah. being self aware. Mm -hmm. Responsibility. Can you expand on that a little bit more when you say responsibility? Um, the leader, like if I was to be a leader, I'm responsible for the outcome of whatever I'm leading. Right. Ownership. Buck right. stops here. Right. Fantastic. All absolutely true and meaningful in terms of what it means to be leader. I want you to consider around the notion of being leader, the who you are presenting to the world, right? When you consider leader, who am I presenting? And so I'm going to share with you another model. Right. And this one is called signals dancing. And this is the model in terms of how and who we present to the world. And you'll notice that there's, you'll see numbers one, two, three, and four. 
And the number one, so the signal number one is the self. I look at, I look at that as the, the essence, the spirit, the gut instinct that lives inside of me, of who I am. Then you'll see signal number two, and that's the external environment. These are all the culturally conditioned responses that we have come to learn about. They're the rules and the regulations that we learned growing up. They're, they're based on the expectations of others and the rewards and punishments that came through with all of these things. You'll notice then the signal number three is the internal environment. And these are all our learned experiences. So it's all the things that happened inside of us. When we had those, con when we took those consequences or those risks, how did it make us feel? What are the internal expectations that I have for myself, right? And what are the patterns and the strategies and the, and the, and the habits that are now deeply embedded inside of me. And then we have signal number four, which is the me that we present to the world. And this model is called signals dancing because it's a dance. There are lots of aspects of ourselves dancing around inside of us. And who we present to the world is a mixture of all that. Now you'll notice that there are three different colors. There's red, there's green, there's blue. Right. And so depending, I like to think of them as the angel and the devil sitting on the shoulder. Right. Yes, 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 yes. Let's do that. Right. And no, 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 no. Let's 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 not do that. Because when we did that, that was a that was an epic failure the last time. Right. Or that didn't feel good. Right. But yeah, but, 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 but we had so much fun doing it. Right. Then it's the right. But I grew up being told that this wasn't the right way to do things. Well, but it feels good. Right, And this is the conversation that goes on inside of us all the time. And when it comes to leading our life, it becomes to which voice am I listening to? You know, and that's where that self, that signal number one voice comes in. And often this voice is very clear, very concise, and it's typically never more than four words. Get off the highway right? Get off the elevator. Don't walk down that alleyway or turn right or turn left, right? It's our gut instinct. And when it comes to being leader, I think it's about learning how to listen to that internal voice that speaks very clearly and concisely to us. How many of you had have, have had the experience where you're doing something and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a thought, you know, call this person, comes into your awareness? Anybody? Right. And then we have what I call signals number two and three. Oh, I'm going to do that later. Oh, the last time I called her, you know, it wasn't a really good conversation, right? This is where signals number two and three come in to rationalize that thought process in terms of what it means to lead myself or what's the de choice or the decision that I'm, that I'm having, that I'm having to make in my world and my life. So accessing our leader self is about going within, accessing the leader that lives. We are born leaders. If you watch children, right, on a playground. You can, you see all the different ways in which they interact. We all have a unique way of leading. And then we're shepherded and heard, herded into an education system that teaches us how we should lead. And for me, it's about coming back to that basic, coming back to that internally referenced place that guides me through my life in terms of how I'm going to lead myself through my life. So when I think of when I, you know, when I decided to talk about this topic of accessing the leader within, it wasn't so much in the context of leading others. It was really in the context of how we lead ourselves and how we lead our life. How am I leading my life? Which brings me to the third part of the conversation today of, you know, how to invite others to be leaders.
we invite others into leading and leading in a certain way by living it, right? I lead others by how I lead myself. It's like when you speak about children, children don't do what they're told, they do what they see, right? If I tell, if I'm a smoker and I am standing there saying to my child, I don't want you ever to smoke, <laughs> right? Nine times out of 10, they're gonna turn out to be smokers because they do what they see, not what they're told. So if I want to lead others, or I want others to invite others to become leaders within themselves and their positions and whatnot, I think what we need to do is we need to start living it for ourselves. This way, the invitation, it's not really a job. It's an invitation. When you think of the people in your life, throughout your life that you looked up to in terms of leader, what were some of the things that captured your attention with them? What were the things that made you say, oh, I want to be just like them? Does anybody have any examples of teachers or coaches or uh, relatives that you aspire to be like as when you grew up? Denny, I see you shaking your head. Is there? <laughs> so I'm a comic book fan and growing up without a father, I had to look at male leaders in, in the comic book world. So for me, it was Mr. Fantastic, the leader of the Fantastic Four. Right, right. You know, and what was it about Mr. Fantastic that drew you? What were some of the qualities that drew you? Um, it, it was along the lines of he, he wasn't perfect, but he knew that he had to trust his team and he had to depend on everybody to be a group and go in one direction together. And so it, it, it became hurting those cats, but in a nice way. Right. Right. Absolutely. You know, I think in today's world, especially when we think about leader and being leader and leadership, we think about more of managing, right? Managing people, managing expectations, right? Managing a group. And it becomes tiresome because it, I think often leaders feel like they're actually like kindergarten teachers or something, right? Trying to herd, the, like you said, herd the cats to do something. Whereas if we were to drop in inside of ourselves and ask, what's really important and meaningful for me? And am I willing to convey that authentically, right? I think someone had said being, being my authentic self. And what does that mean, right? We looked at the model of signals dancings and we saw, ooh, who I present to the world can depend on which conversation I'm having. So there is no good, bad, right, wrong. I think it becomes about awareness. Am I aware? of the words that I'm choosing to speak inside myself and outside myself? Am I aware of the behaviors and the actions that are happening inside myself and outside myself? I think when it comes to accessing the leader that lives within and as we go inside ourselves, it's about curiosity. Am I willing to be curious about myself and how I'm leading my life. And then that becomes the invitation for how others then get to choose how they lead their lives. Now, I know this is slightly different when we're in a corporate environment, but at the same time, I go, is it really? Because if I'm willing to share my truth, the truth of my experience, I think we often speak in language of outside ourselves, right? I see you doing this. You make me feel like that, right? That's outside of me, as opposed to using language of, I, I feel this. I see this. I experience this is a very different conversation to have 
with ourselves and others because it becomes back to taking the responsibility. I take responsibility for what's going on inside of me, which becomes the invitation for another to take responsibility for what's going on inside of them. Now, there's no guarantee that they're going to do that. All we can do is continue to be ourselves and tell the truth of our experience. And I think that gets lost in when we consider being leader or what leadership is about. We think of it in terms of doing, right? We couple leadership with doing as opposed to being. And for me, you know, accessing the leader in terms of how I live my life is about being. How am I being? And am I curious? Am I curious to ask the questions? You know, I, I no longer say things like, ah, uh, you said. I now say things like, I heard. Because what I heard and what you said might not match. I mean, has anybody gotten into that argument with anybody? <laughs> I can right? talk easily. <laughs> That, right. Is that why we mirror people and say it back? So we're pretty sure that we're both on the same page. Right. <laughs> and nine times out of 10, it's not, right? Oh, okay. well, I didn't say that. That. <laughs> yeah. Right. And that's when then the argument starts. Well, you know, because it's, it's really not about what they say. It's about what I heard. Mm -hmm. And so as we consider leading and being leader inside ourselves, I really think it is about what am I willing to reveal to others? How I lead my life becomes an example for others to lead their lives very differently. I used to uh, uh, work with um, a colleague and we were doing a project in a government department for career enhancement, you know, helping people to move up the ladder in their organization. And I would have the conversation with these people around why they wanted to move up. Why did you want to move into a managerial or supervisory or executive position? And sometimes the answer was, well, I'm the major breadwinner in the family, so the extra money. Uh, sometimes the answer was, well, everybody told me I should. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing it, right? Isn't that just part of what we're supposed to do, right? Very rarely did they actually ask themselves, is this really what I want for myself? And can I carve out something different for myself? Right? And it, for those of us who are entrepreneurs, we are constantly leading ourselves. Right? Having our own business, we are in a constant conversation of where else am I going to take my business? Well, I, I want to invite you to consider where else am I going to take myself? Because where I take myself is where I'm going to take my business. My life is my business and my business is my life. So leading for me is about going inside and discovering what are the beliefs, values, and attitudes that I have around leader? How do I express that in my world? And what else can I discover about myself? Because when we bump up against things, these are all invitations for us to go, oh, oh, there's something here. There's something here for me to discover about myself. What could that be, right? When we meet people that we're bumping up again, I go, woohoo, yay, because I know I'm going to discover something, right? Forget about the people that I get along with. Yeah, I get along with, you know, great. It's the people I don't get along with. It's the people I bump up against where I go, woohoo, here comes my life, because I know there's a lesson in there for me somewhere, because I've created them in my world for me to discover something, right? When I was working in organizations, when I would bump up well before I started my journey, it was like, oh, okay. Uh, you know, to learn that they are an aspect of me. They are a mirror of me. And I, what I'm seeing is an aspect that I'm willing or not willing to see in myself. 
right? When you see someone and you go, oh, girl, or oh, God, you're looking good, right? Are you willing to turn that mirror around and go say to yourself, wow, I'm looking good? <laughs> Right? We create these aspects of ourselves. And I think leading is about recognizing the aspects that we bring into our world and how we choose to engage with them on a daily basis. Right? And I'm talking right from children up in age, because oftentimes I discover so much about myself through the eyes of a child because they see with such clarity right? There are no filters. As we become older, we have all these filters inside of us, right? So def defining leader, family system, right? Look at your family system. Look at how your parents were. Look at how your relationship was with your siblings and your extended family. What are some of the beliefs that you grew up with around that? Being leader, begin to notice what are, what's the conversations that are going on inside of me around the expectations that I think other people have of me and the expectations that I have of myself. How much of what I'm doing is based on what others want or what my perception of what others want from me. And how much then does that shape how I feel I need to be? And then the invitation. All I need to do is live my life. And that becomes the greatest invitation. I often say to my clients, are you willing to own that you are the most important person in your world? Because the only way that you can teach your children that is to be that. So it's not about doing, it really is about being. Accessing the leader that lives inside you starts with the journey inside. And then that becomes manifested outside.